Hey guys, welcome back to a new tutorial. Today we're going to be turning your logo into a 3D one. You can make, for example, this one, which we're going to be learning today, something a little bit more rounded like that. Or you can also turn icons like this one into 3D ones. And for a matter of fact, you could even do that <laughs> if you want to. Um, yeah, the possibilities are endless and it's a pretty cool technique. First, we need to create the icon, logo or text and we want to turn into 3D. For that, we're going to be using Illustrator, but I guess you could use any program that lets you create SVG files. Because SVG files are the only vector files Blender can handle. So I'm going to go into Illustrator. Just design something that um, suits you, that you like. Um, choose a cool font that you like, whatever floats your boat. If you're working with text in Illustrator, you need to convert it first to be able to use it in Blender. Just choose the text, press Ctrl, Shift and O and it will be converted to a path. Um, this is basically all we need to do. Um, alternatively, you can also draw your path, etc. But I'm not going to go into that too deeply because it's not really an Illustrator tutorial. Yeah, if you got um, your logo, your text, your icon or whatever. Just press Ctrl Shift S and then save it as an SVG file. I already created the logo that I'm going to use. It's our logo right now, so I'm going to be working with that. So after you saved your file, let's go into Blender and import it there. All you need to do right now is go to File, Import, and then choose Scalable Vector Graphics SVG. Just navigate to the folder where your stuff is and open it. Right now you don't see anything and that's because it's too small. Just choose everything with A and scale it up with S and you can see there it is. Okay, you see it's a lot of individual objects right now. Just choose all of them and press Ctrl J to merge them into one. So it's a little bit easier to work with. Then I'm going to choose our uh, text, press right click, set origin uh, to center of mass. Then I'm just going to align it in the middle, zero, zero, and rotate it by 90 degrees. Right now it's just a flat plane. To change that, we're just going to go here in the object data properties, go to geometry and then choose extrude and extrude it a little bit. Now that we got some geometry, we're just going to right click, convert to mesh. Um, now we got a mesh with our logo. Um, but if you go into edit mode, you can see the geometry, like um, it looks horrible. To change that, we need to remesh it. Um, you can just go into the object mode again, into the modifiers tab and add the remesh modifier. Be very careful with the numbers. If you put it up too high, you might crash your computer. So I'm going to choose smooth for that case and deselect remove disconnected. Then I'm just going to increase the size bit by bit until I start to see my logo again. Yes, I think I'm going to go with 10 maybe. I think 10 looks all right for me. Just press this button and choose apply. If you go back into the edit mode, you can now see we have a lot more geometry and it's all um, squares, which is much easier to work with. Another thing we can do because it's a little bit much right now is um, use the decimate modifier again to get rid of some of the geometry. I'd say maybe once or so is enough. And don't worry about the edges here if they look a little bit ugly. That's fine right now. Just apply it again. Yeah, that's, I think that's enough like that. Um, I just changed the material to gray to see a bit more. Our text already looks quite good. Um, you can leave it like that if you want to. But what I would like to do is round the edges a little bit. So it looks a bit smoother and nicer. For that, we're just going to go into the Sculpt mode, just choose the Smooth brush and increase the radius and decrease the strength and just brush over the whole thing. 
just like that. Just brush over it and you can see all the edges get smoother and smoother. Also do the back side and just keep going until you are happy. I'm not going to do too much uh, because I still want the letters to keep their form. Okay, I think I'm happy with how it looks. I'm just going to go out of the sculpt mode back into the object mode. Press right click and shade smooth in case you haven't done that already. And you can see the text looks quite nice. It has rounded edges. It looks very smooth, but still um, kept the form. The next thing I want to do is uh, make it look a little bit nicer. For that, we're going to give it the material, create a nice environment, etc. First off, I'm going to choose our text, open a new window and open the shader editor, just like that. I'm going to delete this material here, the SVG material. It was the default. We don't need that one and create a new one. Increase the metallic and decrease the roughness. You can already see it looks quite nice. It's this chromey lettering uh, that we got going here. But what I would like to do to uh, make it look even cooler is add some variation in the surface, make it a little bit dirty, a little bit scratched, etc. Um, for that, we're just going to add a noise texture, then a color ramp and connect the two things together, the color in the factor and tear the color into the roughness. Now we can just play around with our noise and our color ramp a little bit. You can see if I move this here, there are some parts that are very shiny and some that are not. Something like that. But I think the noise is way too small, so we're gonna increase it. Something like that. Also increase the detail and the roughness also. I will also increase the roughness here. And you can already see it starts to look, look a little bit more interesting than before. Just um, push those two together to make it more defined. Uh, I don't like it that the rough patches are so visible. So I'm just going to choose the white color and decrease it a little bit uh, to a grayish one. The, what the color means is black is zero and one is uh, like a hundred percent. So if you uh, take down the white, um, the maximum roughness will decrease. Uh, I think this looks quite nice. What you could also do is add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node, like that. Connect the mapping and the generated to the vector. What, the, what this allows you to do is rotate your texture a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna rotate it here by 90 degrees and maybe here also by 90 and also stretch it a little bit like that. Now, what I'm also going to do is move this whole thing up, then copy the noise and the color ramp and add a bump node. Here, I'm just going to uh, reset the color ramp real quick. Like that. Connect the color to the height and the normal to the normal. You can see it looks very crazy right now, um, but we're gonna change that right away. First of all, we're gonna decrease the strength a lot to something really small and also the distance. I'm also gonna decrease the scale of our noise. Decrease the roughness a little bit and the detail also. So, and what this does, it creates some kind of imperfections on the surface of our material and makes it look a little bit more realistic. Um, I'm gonna increase the roughness again a little bit. Yeah, something like that uh, I think works well. The next thing we need to do is create the environment and make it look pretty. Usually to light chrome objects, I like to use an HDRI. You can just do that um, by going back into the shading editor here and change to world. And right here, uh, just press shift A 
and then add an environment texture. Just open an HDRI that you like. Um, and you can already see the reflections, they look quite nice actually. And depending on the HDRI you choose, this will uh, change drastically. Mm, I think this long one looks quite nice. And what you can do if you don't want the background uh, in your picture, you can either go to uh, Render Properties, Film and then Transparent. And you can render out the transparent uh, version of your text. Or if you want to have a background in your uh, render, but not the same as your HDRI, you can uh, uncheck transparent again. Then you're just gonna duplicate the background here. Um, push this one a little bit to the side. Then add a mix shader node. Connect those two together. And then add another node, the light path node. This is very useful and uh, it's something that I use in a lot of projects. Just choose the camera ray and put it in the factor of the mix shader. And as you can see, we now got the background that we have here. You can just choose whatever we want, but the light is still coming from our HDRI. I'm just going to set up a camera real quick to make my composition. One more tip that you can do is um, Choose your HDRI here and press Ctrl T. Um, one info for that you need the Node Wrangler add on enabled. It's a very useful add on, I can recommend it. Just go under Edit, Preferences, Add ons, and then type for Node Wrangler here. Just activate it and you will be able to do that. And now we can just rotate our HDRI. Uh, to find something that looks a little bit nicer. I'm just going to use a different HDRI really quickly. Yeah, and uh, as a background you can choose whatever you want. You can also import the image. Um, also an add-on I could recommend is import images as planes. Just go into preferences and activate it. Then uh, choose an image that you like. Something like that. Scale it up so it's a little bit bigger. You can also, also do the same with videos. You can also import videos as backgrounds. That's very easy. Just gonna go here back to object and increase the emission a little bit to make it brighter. One last thing I would like to do is um, do some compositing with our image. For that, we just need to render out the frame. Then here, go into the Compositor workspace. Press use notes, that's very important. And then also add a viewer node. Just press Shift A, viewer here, and add the output right here. Okay, and in case you don't see it, just press N and under view, just go here to backdrop and activate that. You can also press fit here so you can see everything um, or zoom in or move it around just like that. Two things I always do with the compositor is first off add a glare node. Um, you can see it's a little bit much right now uh, but we can make it better in a second. Just choose fog glow. I like this one the most. It's a natural kind of glow uh, around the highlights of your image, set it to high and play around with the settings here with the size, this threshold, whatever. And what this will do is make it a little bit more dreamy, a little bit more um, blown out, but I really like this look. And then I'm also going to add a lens distortion node. Yes, just like that. Um, right now nothing happens, just increase this value a little bit. You will see what 0 0.1 is too much. Uh, you'll see in a second, uh, it's uh, very distorted now. Just be careful with these values. The idea behind lens distortion is that it looks a little bit more realistic because every camera lens there is has some kind of distortion 
and chromatic aberration in it what, and this simulates that to make it a little bit more realistic just gonna use um, 0 0.02 maybe and 0 0.02 yes much better already then choose fit so you don't see those edges around here and I also like to choose jitter and uh, gives this kind of grainy texture to the whole thing and I quite like this texture then what you need to do which is very important just connect the output here to the composite because else if you render the whole image there will be nothing um, of your compositor nodes um, the only thing left to do is like, make a little animation out of it and then I think we got it all I'm gonna do is a very simple animation it's nothing fancy of or like that I'm just gonna uh, make it rotate for that I'm just gonna set a keyframe on the first frame and another one on the last and then press 360 replace the keyframe and one important thing that I like to do is here choose the handle type uh, the interpolation type and set it to linear you should see your logo icon or whatever you did it will be rotating and be animated just like that okay guys thank you very much for watching i hope you had fun and learned something if you have any kind of question just write it in the description we always try to answer every comment that we get and if you want to share your work with us uh, you can just send it to us on Instagram or tag us in your post. We're going to leave the link down below in the description and we are looking forward to see something of you. Hopefully till next time.